Hello everyone and welcome to the show. I'm here every single week. My name's Chris Miller. I'm going to be with Mr. David Seaman, uh, England and Arsenal goalkeeping legend. David, this is going to be fun. Okay. We're going to have a bit of fun. <laughs> Each week we're going to be here. We're going to chat some football stories, obviously football news, because um, yeah. there's that every week. Um, but basically get, you know, get some of the good anecdotes, some good stories, some, have some good fun with this basically. Cool. Um, we're doing a show, we need to come up with a name for this, maybe. Do we want to, the marketing guys have been coming up with some ideas for a name for the show. Yeah. Okay, cool, they've been working around the clock. Okay. What we got? Let's <laughs> have a look. Don't know if they can see this, but right. Um, <laughs> number one, option one, hand of pod. Hand of pod, yeah. no, not having that. No? Pod like a <laughs> no? Reminds me too much of Maradona. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Don't say that to an England lady. <laughs> um, pony tales. Mm. We're going to be doing some old stories yeah, from right. their career and stuff. Pony tales. Who came up with that one? Uh, he's sacked now. He's sacked. Yeah. Got rid of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. We're out of there. <laughs> we'll, we'll send it back to the drawing board. We'll, we'll come up with a name for the show. But either way, each week we're going to be here. We're going to just chat about some football stories um, and obviously talk about your career because you've had obviously a glittering career. Um, and you know, personally, I just want to hear all the kind of weird and wonderful things that went on behind the scenes. All of them. All Ooh. of them, literally all of them. No chance. How was that? <laughs> How you doing there? You had a good weekend? Yeah, not too bad. I was at um, QPR's game against Reading. I was nice. uh, invited there and got inducted into the Forever Ours Club, which is like a Hall of Fame. Amazing. Club. Are you doing so, so are you doing, you're doing some work for them as well at the moment? No, gonna... no, no, no. I was just, I was just there as a guest. Um, went on the pitch at half time. It was, it was nice to go back. You know, it was, um, so it's been over 20 years since I went back there. Yeah. And um, you know, after having four great years in, what was it, 86 to 90. Mm. Yeah, it was Must nice be, to go back. Yeah, it's a very nostalgic feeling. Kind of yeah, and, the, and the ground hasn't changed. Yeah. You know, like when you're on the pitch, it's exactly the same. Yeah. You know, things have changed, you know, off the pitch a little bit. Yeah. Well, they had a new owner, was it, a few years back? And yeah. Yeah, he's, he's been there a few years now and uh, yeah, they're, they're doing well. Yeah. yeah. What's that like sort of going back to the old old clubs and, and sort of all of that nostalgic feeling and the memories and the fans chanting your name again? I mean, does that get, make you give teary-eyed or...? No, it's just, yeah, it's just the way it is. It's a nice emotional like, experience. Yeah, it was, it was nice to go back and, and get the reception that I got. Yeah. yeah. You know, because when I left, you know, there was, there was it, it was split, you mm -hmm. know, because I'd gone to Arsenal, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the fans didn't like it. Yeah, London that. club, it's... But, yeah, yeah, it was nice to go back. Well, talking about Arsenal, obviously we had the Community Shield this weekend. Yeah. Um, great to get some silverware off to a yeah. good start. I mean, what, yeah. what was your thoughts? Did you see the game? I watched the game, yeah. Um, I thought Arsenal did well. Mm -hmm. You know, they, um, they more than held their own. I know Chelsea aren't playing brilliant at mm. the moment, but um, I think with Arsenal's quick, like one touch and two touch, mm. you know, when they're on, they can, they can take any team apart. And they showed that in glimpses on Saturday, and then uh, we had the drama of the penalties. We love then, a good penalty shoot. <laughs> <laughs> which then brought back another memory yeah. where I missed a penalty in the charity shield. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know Peter Schmeichel saved it. What was it? So what? Get, you know, we were talking about earlier because we were watching the game. We we're watching the highlights as well, and just going back to watch Courtois step up to take his yeah. penalty. He's, he does that. He does. He, he does do that quite regularly, I believe. He, he, Courtois does it, yeah, take penalties in training. Right. Anybody can score a penalty in training. In training. But I you mean, get out there on Wembley. <laughs> what put, is it with goalkeepers though, wanting to like I you know because you put yourself in the most high pressure yeah. situation? Your penalty shootout is your time to be a hero. Yeah. He shouldn't have had to come out of that no, being the he just, he just wants to score a goal, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 That's <laughs> to so give it all that, but um, yeah, he forgot to tell his mind it was a. Penalty, not a goal. Yeah, kick. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so, so tell me about your the touch. So did you only take one? I've only ever took one, and uh, it was against Man United Charity Shield, as it was then. Yeah. Um, and as I put the ball down, I looked up, and the goal just went, and I tried to place it, and Michael just read me and just threw his cap on it. Mm. Yeah. Was there part of you which was like, actually, I've changed my mind? <laughs> no, I just I knew what I was doing. I took like two step run up. Yeah. yeah. You know, giving it loads and yeah. like just tried to pass it in the goal and. Yeah. Uh, George Graham wasn't too pleased. Oh, but so, you know, in, in terms of stepping up to do that, do you have to, I mean, who's asking for, who's asking for takers at that point? Is oh, it no, this Graham? was after, this was probably after about four or five right. had gone. So you're I in don't sudden think death. I was, yeah, I was on sudden death. Yeah. So then I've missed, so then yeah. I've got to go back in goal. And I'm thinking, I've got to save this yeah. next one, otherwise I'm in trouble. What happened? Brian Robson scored, I think. <sighs> yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, there's, there's one way to heap more <laughs> pressure on yourself. As yeah, a but, the, but the, the Charity Shield or Community Shield as it is now is great because 
I know it sounds weird, but like you've got another trophy on mm. your team photo. Yeah. You know, I've got a picture at home with me with three trophies. It was when we won the double mm -hmm. and, and then we had the charity yeah. shield. And trust me, it looks great. No, absolutely. And also, you know, we were saying, having looking through the the atmosphere at the game, the, the, no one was thinking that was sort of like a, a friendly pre-season no. kind of situation. I know it's not friendly, but it was a London derby. It was yeah. played at, a, you know, there was points. Well, of that's, that's what you say. It, it is a London derby because, you know, the fans are seeing each other day in, day out. Mm. You know, so the, the guys have got to put on a good performance and uh, and they showed that they care, you know, by, by some of the tattles that were going yeah. in, you know, and um, and I think in the way that the Arsenal players celebrated afterwards yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, are you hopeful going into this season then for, as an Arsenal yeah, fan? Yeah, always am. Yeah. Not an Arsenal fan, but anyway. <laughs> are you not an Arsenal fan? Leeds fan. <laughs> oh, there you yeah. go. So I would have just assumed that you were sort of... I know, yeah. No, I've been a Leeds fan all my life. Ah, okay, so yeah. is that something that you can... I mean, being a legend of a club, you, yeah. you're obviously going to always have that affinity. And of course, for them. yeah. You know, a lot of my support is, is with Arsenal, I'm yeah. for them. Yeah. As well as Leeds, you know, I know that Leeds had a good win yesterday at Bolton. So that, yeah, but the, the, so that's your that's the boyhood team. Yeah, the, the, you know, yeah, the, and the, and that's sort of my career there, you yeah. know. But uh, got told I weren't good enough at nineteen. Ah, you still, <laughs> you still have affection for me, which is very. That's oh great. yeah, you can't choose yeah. the club you support. No, you, you don't change it. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm yeah. not one of those people that change your club. Yeah. You know, if they're not doing well. Do you find, um, you know, when you think about players now who often go for the big money transfers and. Their, their loyalties often question, you know, you, you look at a player who's been at a club for 10 years, for example, and I mean, the Carl Walker thing recently, mm -hmm. leaving, having been there for a fair few years, maybe there were six or seven years, and, and really being brought up by the club, I think fans almost expected that he was suddenly a, a, a fan of the club, that he was, you know, he was, yeah. he, you know, is there that sense of, no, no, this is my job, this is yeah, the company is. I work for, yeah. you know? It is your job, and it's, um, it's how you earn your money. Yeah. Um, it's how you buy your houses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the way it is, you know. But when people used to say to me, well, what about when you played Leeds? You know, and I've got like two incentives, really. Obviously, I wanted to prove them wrong again. Yeah. But, you know, after telling me at 19. Um, but also then there's like wind bonuses and stuff like that at stake, yeah. you know, so it's... Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's enough going on. It's not I think. like I'm purposely meant to let some goals in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's, um, I, yeah, it's, it's always interesting to, to hear from that perspective because as fans, we often watch and, uh, you know, you see them wearing the shirt and you just think oh, they're bleeding that, you know, the colours. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, they've got a career to think about and they've yeah. got to think about paying the bills and, and you know, no matter what the, the wages are nowadays, it's, yeah. it's life. It's different, it? but it's still... You know, the, the, the situations are still there. You yeah. Know, where you've, you've, that's how you earn your money. Definitely. You know, and, it, and whatever the going rate is, that's the going rate. Oh, I'll tell you about a going rate this week. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it? 100 and, what were we at? 100 and 200 million we got. Yeah. It was 200 million. I mean, that's just half of the deal because I think there's another, the wages total 225 or something uh, like that. Net. Um, <laughs> I mean, what when you saw that come in is this yeah. is this just like okay cool the world has gone crazy or is this no this is just actually just signifying where football has where, what we've reached yeah. in football as a, a global a sport that's so global and so um you generate so much revenue that you know mm. you can talk about these kind of figures well it's yeah the, the money's there you know people are paying that sort of money and mm. like i said the going rate you know if you're one of the best players in the world you're going to demand the highest wages yeah and whatever you get you get well played do you think any Premier League clubs still have it in them in the next couple of weeks to pull out a, a, a transfer of similar proportions? No. No? No. Oh, well, I say no. You, I would say Man City are capable of it. Um, maybe Chelsea, but you know, from what you see... Tottenham haven't spent any money yet. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't think they're, they'll be in a market for no. that sort of fee. No, because the moment... Like like Arsenal said, won't be either. The moment you pay that kind of fee, you're paying... Uh, you know, I mean, Neymar must be on. I'm not sure what his wages are. Three hundred thousand a week or something. No, I've, well, I've heard six hundred and that's six net ah, as well. Okay, that's after tax. Yeah. So yeah, but no, I don't. Can't see. Um, I can see a, a couple of Premier League clubs might be able mm. to go, you know, stretch it that far, but I doubt it very much. Um, in terms of you know, your own career and make, and doing your transfers. Were there any specific moments? We're not talking the 200 millions, the crazy stuff anymore, but you know, the process I imagine is still fairly similar. The people who are involved, the agents, and um, was there anything, you know, in your career, was there a particular transfer or, or moment that maybe you were approached and, and you, didn't, you didn't want to go through with it or you were being forced 
in to talk no, you to a club I, that you want to talk to? When I went to um, when I went to Arsenal, mm -hmm. I went for a, a record fee for a goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. You know, it fell through initially, initially because uh, transfer deadline day. But right. then it, but then it all got sorted out. You know, so I went there in the summer. But uh, yeah, that's. Normally, the only time you know that there's a transfer or a new player coming in is when the physio goes missing because he's got to go and do the right, medical. Do the medical. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and when you see other players who, it's, uh, the, when the physio does disappear and you've got one of your teammates out, then you like is is there usually a general sense in the club that you kind of know what's coming when certain players are on their way out, mm. or does it take you by surprise? Are there any particular moments you remember surprising you? Players it, that left Arsenal, maybe? No, I don't. It, players coming in takes you by surprise. Mm. You know, because you don't really hear of it, but you get because there's so much speculation before, mm -hmm. you just you don't know what to believe. You know, so you just uh, you just wait and see, wait and see, wait and see, see until they walk through the doors of the training ground. That's when you know that they've signed. Yeah. 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 Um, in terms of uh, some strange, more well, I say strange moves. I mean, Robbie Keane's gone to a club in India. Um, it, it's these markets are opening up now. These leagues are opening up now. These places to go live and work and play yeah. and trade. I mean. Was that anything you know you would ever have considered? Had the Chinas, the Indias, um, they weren't they weren't around when I was no. you know when I was playing. Could, would it have interested it you? It would though? have like maybe going to like Spain or Portugal mm -hmm. might have if, if there was any interest, but because um, the golf's good, <laughs> <laughs> the weather. <Yeah. laughs> but um, yeah, there was there was never anything like that. But I was I was happy where I was. Yeah. You know, and if you if you're happy, then generally players stay where they want to stay. Um, when you know when you see someone like Robbie Keane go over there, do you sort of you know he's had such a brilliant, he's such a respected player. He hasn't necessarily won all the trophies or anything, but he's um, he's you know he's done he's been been a legend for Ireland, yeah. for example. But um, is it the kind of point where you sort of go, why not? You know, is is it worth like stringing out a career? Well, of course, to, it's going to be worth it because financially, it's going yeah. to be worth it for him. Um, for his reputation, though. Yeah, he's coming towards the end of his career. You know, so he still feels that he can carry on. Yeah. Um, Obviously, he's not had the, the same offers here. Yeah. So he's just looking after himself. Absolutely. Um, tell me, we're going to we're going to wrap up soon because we've had a good little chat. We just wanted to do a final because we're talking about ex Arsenal players. We, uh -oh. thought we'd, <laughs> <laughs> we thought we'd try a little quiz. Our uh, marketing team has uh, and production team have been working behind the scenes, as always, as like serious, seriously hard on this one. Right. Um, so we're going to try some. Where are they nows? Okay. For your old Arsenal teammates. Okay. Whoa. Got five questions for you. Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay, where are they now? Number one, John Jensen, Danish player who played for Arsenal from 92 to 96. A, is he a manager in the Danish First Division? Or B, does he run a retirement savings company called Jensen's Pensions? <laughs> I've is got to go with a manager. It can't be Jensen's Pensions. That's so funny if it is, and if it is, well played, Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> You're correct. He is a manager in the Danish First Division. <laughs> um, number two, Ian Selly. 42 games for Arsenal between 92 and 97. You remember Ian? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, where is Ian now? Is he a coach working at Arsenal's academy in Dubai? Didn't know they would have had an academy in Dubai. Right. Or B, is he working as a baker of specialist wedding cakes in Exeter? <sighs> Please be Dubai. He's enjoying the sun in Dubai. <laughs> it says very good. <laughs> Cakes would have been good though. I'm not sure no. whether he was a, you know, whether he was no. a rotund player when he was playing. But um, number three, Mark Overmars, hundred games for Arsenal between 1997 and 1999. A, he hosts a podcast about space travel called Overmars Goes Overmars. <laughs> Be a rival for this podcast here, here, with ponytails. Um, or B, runs a classic car restoration company with his dad and brother. Ooh. Was Mark Overmars? You know, I'm a big space nut, car, or what, is he a, a classic car nut? I'm thinking what cars he had when he was at Arsenal. I'm going to go for the car one. You're correct. Yeah. He was the cars. I love the idea of Overmars goes Overmars. <laughs> yeah, right. That could have been awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> number four, Paolo Venazza. I know, Do I'm, I pronounce I'm, it correctly? I remember him, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Four games. Only four games for Arsenal mm -hmm. between 97 and 2000. That is, that's good lad, by yeah? the way. He's a good lad. He's good fun. Yeah. yeah. That's tough though, four games, gosh. Yeah. Um, a, runs a pizza parlor in Luton called <laughs> Pizzas by Paolo. <laughs> or B, working as a football agent in North London. I might have heard of something that where he's an agent in North London. Okay, we're gonna go? I'm gonna go with that. 
You are right, he is an agent. <laughs> so, anyone out there yeah. looking for an agent? We got one, or a pizza. I don't know where the palace is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, last one. So you've actually got every single, I mean, not that this is- I was the, gonna say, This is a minute. mastermind, but you have got every single one of these right. Number five, Jermaine Pennant. Yeah. Played 12 games between 99 and 2005. Jermaine, remember Jermaine? I know him. Good yes, Very well, yeah. A, owns a property company called Pennant's Tenants. Or B, playing for Billericay Town in the seventh tier of the English Football League. Is that Billericay? He is a Billerick. Yeah, that. I love Penance yeah. Tenants though. That shit. He's these are great. See, you've got some ideas. You've got some ideas to send around to these. Needs guys. a third one in just to make me, <laughs> make me panic a bit. <laughs> um, amazing, David. Well, thanks very much. Uh, that was fun. Well, look, we'll be back here again. We'll have a good chat about next week's football news. I want to hear more like interesting stories from your career as well, cool. of course. Guys, join us then. See you next time.